Good morning, good morning, good morning. Who is awake this morning? Good, good morning, morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Who is awake this morning? That will be you and that will be us. And this, this is Hope Message Breakfast Club. And I want to say thank you all for getting on here this morning. We have a special guest for our business master class this morning. Woo! And I'm so excited. Erica, will you do the introduction? <laughs> I sure will. Good morning once again. We have with us today, Myesha Thomas Ruff. She is the managing director and co-founder of the Consulting Accounting Management Group founded in 1999. She took the big leap from corporate world and founded, co-founded this company in 1999. She is also the co-founder of the Community of Compassion Entrepreneurship Program, Excellent Experience, and that is a part of the Church of Christian Compassion, uh, located in West Philadelphia, 62nd and Cedar Avenue. Who's the pastor? The pastor is Pastor Willie Herndon. Awesome. 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 Herndon. awesome. Shout out, shout out. Awesome, <laughs> Pastor. All right. So we're so excited to have you here this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for getting on here. Thank you for being with us this sure. morning. Thank um, you it's for early. Can I, I'm going to tell you this. And I'm going to tell you this right now. She came here with a whole spread, okay? You can't <laughs> see the spread. And I'm going to fix this camera because it's, it's irking me a little bit. We need to make sure everybody's in the frame. There we go. There we go. Uh, she got a whole spread this morning. She got the water, the tea, the orange juice, the fruit. You, you can't see it, but it's over there. And I just want to shout out. And then she came all the way from Delaware with all that stuff. What in the world is happening this morning? So we are feeling the love this morning um, yes, unexpectedly. Are. And that's God exceeding abundantly above what you could ever ask or think. So thank oh, you. Yes. Of course. Of course. <laughs> all right. So this is the Biggest Master Class, right? Um, yes. Tell us what you do. Okay. All righty. So do we want to open up in prayer? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay. Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you on this morning, God. We thank you for making this a way on this yes, morning, God. Yes. I thank you for these two beautiful ladies that are gathered here with me today at my son's. Thank my son for hosting us here <laughs> in Northern Liberty. So, God, you know, just whatever you want us to say, decrease us and increase you. And let the information come out exactly the way that you would want it to. Yes. We thank you for being everything to us yes. of course our way maker and it is in jesus name i do pray amen amen amen, amen. amen. so i'm an accountant by trade okay um i went to drexel university i majored in accounting so but i always wanted to be a business owner okay i grew up um in a family of entrepreneurship right okay. so um and even when i think about it, i was thinking about this yesterday my mother was an entrepreneur too even though she worked um for many years in fashion and retail. Okay. But, you know, she had her own clothing line and, you know, several different things. So, of course, always wanted to be a business owner as well. Thought, like, I got to major in something that could really get me there okay. and make me successful in that arena, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I chose to major in accounting. Okay. So, but you I obviously have a money mindset or a numbers mindset. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was good in that man. So I was good in that man. Yeah, that's not, that's not, not me at all. No, that's <laughs> science, no. Because I wanted to be a dentist, right? Oh, if my best girlfriend is on, her baby's going to go and do that for us. Her mm -hmm. baby's accepted the UCLA dental school and a whole lot of others, but she's going to go be the dentist because me and that science. <laughs> but me and that man, we real good. Okay, real good. Right. Yeah, yeah. We need you. Yeah. We need you in the kingdom. Yeah, yeah. Count that I'm, money. I work for that kingdom man. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so um, this is not just my dream, Consulting mm -hmm. Accounting Management Group. It was the dream of two of my best girlfriends as well. They're both accountants, right? Oh, wow. So it's three of us that have known each other since childhood that are all accountants. And mm -hmm. um, we dreamed, really, of being an account the accountants for the stars. Wow. We wanted nothing to do with nobody else. But sports and entertainment professionals. That was they it. Money. They yeah. wanted money. Yeah. They wanted money. Yeah. Everybody was like, what about <laughs> business? And what about us? And what about me? I said, no. You got to be famous. <laughs> I'm trying to get invited to everything. Right? Huh? I wanted to be at it all. But that wasn't, you know, how right. God wanted it to be. He really, really, really wanted us to embrace. 
embrace how to help people, right? Mm. And help the everyday taxpayer, mm. help small businesses, help independent contractors, help high net worth individuals as well, and those in the industry, mm -hmm. right? But anybody in, that needed information around accounting, around small business consulting, around financial planning, around all the areas of how to even start a business. Okay. So what we did, we embarked upon the journey when we were in college. We wrote papers on it. We did, you know, all kind of projects. You know, we built this business when we were in college. Okay. Right. Was the and then consulting accounting management group. Okay. CAM group, right? Okay, CAM. But that's, yeah, but that's, that's our initials them. also. Our initials are Camille <laughs> and <Amy Marisha>. So <laughs> my brother pinned it on us. My brother pinned it on us. So, uh -huh. yeah. so um yeah, so you know, we all had corporate careers. We were only going to stay in corporate America for a little while. Just a little while. Five to seven to eight years in order to get the experience we need. Okay. Well, you know what happens with that corporate, right? You get all... So yes, yes. 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 Then you start getting bonuses and yeah, stock on. options on, and all yes. that stuff, right? Yes. Then you all right. never want to leave. Then you start having kids. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. And they get accustomed to a lifestyle. Yeah. Yes. And they ain't about that struggle like this generation. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't about that life. <laughs> you know, so the first time when I walked away from corporate in 2012, <laughs> one of my kids said to me, Mom, you know he is not about this struggle life. Right? Oh. We ain't about it. <laughs> So it is really difficult, you right. know, to get the support system even within your own family. Wow. But I encourage anybody, any and everybody to do it, right? And save as much money before you take the leap, as wow. much as you possibly can. But you're going to also hear today, I'm going to stress that, yeah, you still need to pay yourself as well. You've got to pay yourself. you got to pay your bills, Right. So, um, you know, with entrepreneurship, yes, you may bootstrap, yes, you may get an inheritance, yes, you may go and get grants or a loan. However you come about it, you know, the best, best thing to do is to, I encourage you to always manage your money properly and pay yourself because you must pay your bills. Okay, so walk us through the steps. Walk yes. Us through. How, well, I know you teach the class in that Christian Compassion mm -hmm. for Entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have one of your students right here, graduate, yes. right? Oh. A winner of our Shark Tank. <laughs> <laughs> yes. how, how does Compassion and Shark Tank go together? I'm not really sure. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> uh, what? Walk a good question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're, we're not going to go there. But right. how, um, how, tell us about that program that she was in and yeah. how, how that came about. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, my pastor, Pastor W. Lonnie Herndon, Church of Christian Compassion, 6121 Cedar Avenue. Come on, join us. Shout out. Come on, join us. Join us. <laughs> We're a big family, so, oh. you know, we love and we welcome everybody. But um, our, our congregation is one full of entrepreneurs, okay. right? And then our pastor is an entrepreneur in his own right. Really? You know, oh, yes, for sure. So... Him and First Lady, they're entrepreneurs in their first right. We have an amazing First Lady as well. Awesome. Hi, Jessica, if you're on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, with that, you know, Pastor, ever since I've been there since 2001, has, you know, known my visions, known, you know, what I believe in, and he also, that's the same things he believed in. Okay. So, you know, he would, and those things are really to educate, okay. right? Educate. Education, awareness, and development, okay? Mm -hmm. So, therefore, he has put programs together since I've been there, right? Mm -hmm. And not that I did not want to, and as outgoing as I could be, I was shy when it came to presenting to people, right? Mm -hmm. But he's pushed me since 2001. Just pushed me out there. Pushed mm -hmm. me, pushed me. And I remember right before this class came about, he was like, we got to do a series. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I literally went and laid in the floor for like three months. Like, God, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. <laughs> but yes, I can't imagine that. Yes, because I was scared. Oh. Yeah. I was scared. Yeah. But the proper planning went in place. Yeah. 
an amazing core team. Shout out to that original core team of Saida Garrett Gass and Desiree McDuffie. Okay. And okay. then the Nat has okay. joined us, you know, in that mm. core team as well. So yeah. we put together, you know, a great plan for entrepreneurs. Desiree is an entrepreneur, Saida, and also the Nat. So it was okay. very easy for us to collaborate and come up with a 10 week, pro excuse me, a 10 to 12 week program. Mm. And it goes through everything from startup steps, marketing, small business accounting, highs and lows of entrepreneurship. We do a panel across generations that are in entrepreneurship. Wow. So from Gen Z all the way to baby boomers. Um, we also touch on the business plan, financing, um, impact, growth, scale, all of that. And what's the name of that program? It's called the Community of Compassion Entrepreneurship Program. And our next sessions are April 2nd, Cohort 1, and April 4th, Cohort 2. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it now. Yes. Right? Yes. 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 For the community, for the CDC, and um, also the registration will begin on March 1st. Okay. Oh, so, so Community of Compassion. Yep. Entrepreneurship Entrepreneur. program. Entrepreneur. Okay. Mm -hmm. And awesome. how do we place contact information for folks to sign up for that? So program? I do not know the website. If somebody could grab the website for the Community of Compassion CDC and drop it in the chat, that would be great. Awesome. awesome. Okay. I'm checking notes. So I'm yes. on double duty right now. As she's talking, I'm like, this, I'm taking notes. I'm on the live so people can have it, right? Yes. Um, awesome. So, and I'm also able to look at your comments if y'all say anything. Yes. Um, so, awesome. So that is the program. It's how many weeks again? It is cohort one is 10 weeks. The final week, the 11th week is the Shark Tank competition. So, because you're getting all of these classes, mm -hmm. I mean, we have to encourage you to do a pitch, right? There has yes. to be a pitch competition. Right. There has to be some type of reward at the end of that pitch competition. So, the um, rewards are like up to $2,000, and I think we were able to reward when you were in a cohort yes. three. It was yes. either two or three yes. different rewards we were able to yes. have. And wow. Erica was our winner. She has a t-shirt business, an amazing t-shirt business that um, has very inspirational, spiritual um, scriptures on it, but you get a memory card. Yes. So her goal is to encourage you to memorize scripture mm -hmm. as well as represent the kingdom yes. with your t-shirt and their beautiful shirts. Beautiful so, encouraging. So shirts. what made her win out of everyone else? What made her the winner? Yes. One, her voice. Have you ever heard her voice? Yes. Have you ever seen her presentation? Okay, She's okay. She's fabulous. She's a voiceover yes. artist as well, right? We know for some major, major companies in yes. this area too, right? Yes. So, but her presentation, she really, she walked in with a vision. Mm -hmm. like she called me with a vision. Mm -hmm. We deacon that sister, so we. <laughs> so, so she called me. She said, I'm scared. I said, come on. Let's do it. <laughs> you, you know about fear yourself. Yeah. yeah. Hang it over it. Pray, yeah. Pray. Yeah. yeah, do it afraid. So yeah. she called. I said, come on, this is unique. You know, everybody got a t-shirt. Mm. But do everybody got a scripture card with their t-shirt? Right. Yes. I, I said, know. I don't know anybody that has that. Right. Yes. You yes. know? Thank you so much. Yes. I think what was so um, awesome about this experience is that you were able to really see the full scale of my vision. Mm -hmm. You were able to finish the sentences with mm -hmm. me because you were able to see it in the fullness. Mm -hmm. So the the t-shirt business is actually it's a package because it's prepared to help you memorize scripture and to study. So the t-shirt comes with us with a script, scriptural saying, a prayer card, and you get a lesson along with the t-shirt. So the pro my company is connected to an Instagram page where Yolanda was one of the teachers for the different scriptures that's on the t-shirt. So again, it's a scripture memorization package that I call it. Mm -hmm. Your t-shirt is your memory card. Wow. So your t-shirt yes. is your memory card. Yes. Wow. Yes. I, I love what's happening right here because what's happening here, I feel I feel like it is the definition of the saying that says life moves at the speed of relationship. Mm -hmm. Oh, it really does. Mm -hmm. It really does. That's yeah. nice. My God. And it's according to who you connect yourself with. 
You know what I mean? So, and especially when you have some kingdom connections. Yes. Right? And this is like a kingdom connection. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one for the mm -hmm. Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Spirit. Yes. 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 Right? And yes. so oh, we get to here. see. To Come on, let's shout. Shout. <laughs> we get to see. We get to see the fruit of your labor. Jesus. Right? Yes. And mm -hmm. that the fear that the enemy tried to use to stop you mm -hmm. on the floor for three months. And stare at white wall. And stare at white wall. I was in my son's old bedroom and it just got painted for my daughter. And I went in there and I just laid on the floor and stared at the walls for three months. Went to work during the day, come home and lay on the floor and stare at the white wall. And he tried to stop it. But there was life and color that was supposed to come. And she won. But how many people have graduated the program so far? Oh God, if we put numbers on it, probably around 50 to 60, okay, wow. and there's been four sets of winners, four cohorts of winners. Awesome. And yes. name some of the various businesses that yes. have come from that. Yes. Vision. Walked in with a vision. I couldn't make it up. Enjoyable. What? Mm -hmm. A smoothie business, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. along with very healthy food. Okay. One of the owners, husband and wife team. Okay. He was Pepsi distribution delivery many, many years, and she was a nurse at Penn. Okay. A uh, team of the old chamber says, I'm a winner. Oh, <laughs> she, I'm coming to her. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoyable. Came in with a vision. Another thing I must plug. Get in contact with the Church of Christian Compassion at 215-472-9040. Somebody put that number in there. <laughs> when they have business expos. Okay. Enjoyable was two months into the program and there was a business expo announced. Mm -hmm. And I said, you must do this expo. Well, we don't got nothing. <laughs> we going to go get some in. Got the vision. But not, we going to go get some ingredients. We're going to get them smoothie bowls, wow. and we're going to do a survey. Well, what's wow. going on the survey? Well, we're about to find out who Come likes on. our stuff and what target market we are going to really, really push. Come right? put it into practice. They, wow. mm, they sold out in less than an hour. What? Wow. Only one that day to sell out. Wow. What? Today, food truck rolling. No. Wow. No. Wow. Came to that class with a vision. Wow. Just like yeah. she came with a vision. Just like Taisha Nicole Pollard, Nicole Taisha Pollard came with a vision. Mm -hmm. Worked with enjoyable owner Tanya Jones at Penn. Nurses. Taisha Nurses. said, Wow. There's only one lady in Philly. I ain't gonna say her name. Running around piercing everybody's ears. Yep, we all know her. Okay? I'm a nurse. Remember when you used to go to the doctor's office and stuff and get that? I got a vision. I want a mobile ear piercing business. <laughs> we going to do this. Wow. We going to do this, Taisha. Yes, we are. Yes, nurse. She won't be pierced. She pierces everybody's ears and it's an experience. She just did my granddaughter. She comes to the house. Wow. Yeah, but then we have a whole spread. That is you know? so awesome. Oh, That's she's amazing. doing the Phillies That's daughters, amazing. the Eagles daughters, the wow. Flyers daughters, the main line. She said she pulls up to the main line, the house be long as a block. Dang. Pulls inside the house. She said, Me, Tasha. I said, You, Tasha. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And it was, we didn't know how to get her insured. But wow. SBDC, Small Business Development Corporations, there's one at Temple, there's one at Widener, there's one, I think, at the University of Pennsylvania, if you're in Delaware, there's one, you know, in the state of Delaware, they're in New Jersey. So they had a plethora of information. So I said, she graduated from Widener. Mm. I said, go to Widener. They were the ones that then taught her and led her how to get insured for her ear piercing business. Wow. So she's bonded and insured, has the best earrings. She's absolutely amazing. Wow. So, so. Yeah. And I, she wants Shark Tank as well. I, look, she said that. She said, I'm going to win up. That is so awesome. Um, so you, you deal in numbers, mm -hmm. you deal in accounting, mm -hmm. and also. And I specialize in taxation. 
taxation, and you mm -hmm. also deal with bringing people's visions to life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody prophesied over me a builder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all I used to think that meant was, oh, yeah, I built a house. Okay. Right, right, right. House. Mm -hmm. And I did. I built a house. I always wanted to build a house. So I built a house, mm -hmm. but it's way, it was way more than that. And I'm just really seeing that come to pass now. Because what what the kingdom does is we build people. Mm, we have right. To. So we're fishers of mm -hmm. men, yeah. right? But then once we go get them and then feed them, because you got to mm. feed people first mm. as, as you prepare to join. Mm -hmm. You feed them in the natural and in the spiritual, yes. and then you have to build them because mm -hmm. they've been so broken from this world. Oh, my God. And so, yes, you do have to rebuild them, and it's it's a it's a time of restoration for mm. them, you know, mm. and a time of refreshing for them, right? Mm. And so, you're being used as one of the tools uh, that God's using to help refresh them, to help rebuild them, and to help bring the vision that God has placed in them to life and let them know that it is possible. Yeah, yeah, you for know? sure, it for sure. Possible. I've just seen so many visions come to pass. And another real passion of mine around, you know, development around entrepreneurship came from just our own process, mm -hmm. right? Remember, I told you guys, if you come into that cohort one with your vision, but with sheer determination, by the time you leave cohort one, all of your startup steps can be done. It doesn't have to take 10, 20 years like it did for me, mm -hmm. you know, but I had a lot of distraction. I had family distraction. I had professional career distraction. You know, when you work in corporate America, you work so many hours. Yeah, yeah. You won't work yes. for that bonus and yes. the stock options. Yes. Right. Trust me. So how can you ever really focus on what you're called to do mm -hmm. when you're doing that? You know, so when you get, when you're able to, you know, really be sheerly determined to get it done, you can get it done in a very short amount of time. Because then there's a lot of other work that has to be done to get to scale. Mm -hmm. Grow, so question. impact, scale. Do you also do you also work with nonprofits as yes. well? Yes. I actually my I, I ran a nonprofit for seven years. Okay. So um we're the largest program in that nonprofit. After twenty years in corporate and I stopped leaving. And I thought about this. This was in 2012. Mm -hmm. And I leaped and I walked away, right? That was a leap year as well. And I'm going to just do entrepreneurship. That's it. Then I went through that savings real quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, oh, I need a little part-time job. But God ain't told me to go get no part-time job. But I went got me a little part-time job at a nonprofit. I said, oh, let me just go be the little volunteer coordinator, right? Mm -hmm. So I went to be the volunteer coordinator. In six months, they said, can you run this? Well, there goes my vision out the door. Because now you got to do a whole, whole lot of work. Right, right, for them as well. So, but it was great because getting that nonprofit leadership executive experience was incredible. I had already served on nonprofit boards, but it even further enhanced um, me to be really be able to serve on nonprofit boards. So, what do you think the difference is between for profit and nonprofit? Just to be the difference. Yeah. Well, for profit, you're supposed to be in business to make money, not mm -hmm. in business for a hobby so you can write off expenses against your taxes. Okay. No, no, no. Three years you got, and then the IRS will be lurking. Um, nonprofit, you're in the, you can make a little bit of money when you're a nonprofit, but you're really in business about the mission. Okay. Nonprofit is about the mission. So a nonprofit CEO or executive director you know, should, you know, does not, and I shouldn't say should not, but does not make a million dollars plus a ton of deferred compensation. But as we know, uh, CEO of Fortune 500 for surely is making millions of dollars with tons of executive compensation and deferred compensation. Mm -hmm. So that is the difference. Yeah. So when... When you are advising people, right, mm -hmm. and helping them bring their vision to pass, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they come to you, and let's say they're in the middle, yeah. they don't know which way to go, yeah. for profit, non profit, mm. how do you gear them into the right direction? Mm. One, I have to listen, 
intently to what they're really trying to achieve, what their mm-hmm. mission is, what their value is, what their value proposition is. Um, values is what I meant to say, what their value proposition is, what their vision is, um, what their motto is, you know, all of those things. But there is something that has, um, you know, come up probably in the last 20 years really, really strong is that of social enterprise, mm-hmm. where there's it's a mix of nonprofit and for profit, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget, we went to do ministry in Houston in 2017 after a hurricane. Our church did raise um, a lot of, you know, funds to take and adopt churches down there to sow into lives of those affected by a hurricane. Mm -hmm. Well, we went to do that work. We went to um, a church in Houston called the Church Without Walls. And I can't, the past, all I can remember is Pastor Ralph. I don't remember the rest of his name. Mm -hmm. I think it was Pastor Ralph. But um, beautiful, beautiful location. Like they, oh God, it was incredible. But they had this huge, like, you know, this huge four-year double stairway, marble, and this huge cafe. Mm. <laughs> we went in the sanctuary. No, first we was in Bible study. Then we went and saw the sanctuary. Then we um, saw this cafe. I turned to pastor. I said, see, <laughs> that's what we need to be doing. They making money when the people come out of church. Yes. Whenever they come out of church. Right, yes. right. And it was tables, everything. Like, it was a full, like, and you were, like, at a food court. Okay. okay. Incredible. Wow. On one side, no, just lounge in the church without walls. The church without Houston. walls. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, absolutely beautiful. And guess what? We have a cat. Aww. Enjoyable host that cafe. <laughs> I know that's right. All we gotta do is see it. I yeah. love how God works. All we gotta do is see it. See it. If yeah. we can see it, yeah. it's like then it's possible. Yeah. Right? It, with yeah. our own eyes. If we know that someone else is, can do it. Like years and years ago, um, it was like this when people do a race mm-hmm. and they would run a mile, right? And then they would say, Oh, no one's ever run a mile this fast. Right, mm-hmm. and then somebody did it. They broke it, mm-hmm. and then they were like, mm-hmm. "Oh, it's possible." Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. right. We just need to see, see that it. it's possible. See right, it. yeah. you know what I mean. And I'm a crazy believer. They call me crazy, right? Oh, crazy? I'm not <laughs> crazy. I'm not crazy about me. But the thing that's that crazy thing. What? And it gets really weak at times. Oh, but yeah. trust yeah. me, I believe. I believe. 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 When it comes to Jesus, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, when it comes to God, I know, I know that I'm flat out. You, you, you want to argue about it? We ain't arguing Mm -hmm. because I believe. Period. Could you do business without God? No, absolutely not. He's the CEO of it all. Oh, come on. (laughs) Of it all. Him. So can't from the beginning without God. From I can't even get up without him. Yeah, but right. ask what socks I'm gonna put on. Right. Huh? <laughs> which which going? shirt, what jacket? Yes. What are we doing? Yes, what are we doing today? What are we eating? Everything. Oh, yeah. Everything. <laughs> Everything. You know? Yeah. But the thing is, like, when you're in corporate America. <laughs> no. that place. Oh, yeah, that place right there. That place. How do you keep God with you? Huh? How you do better you do that? You better. How? And I did all the way from the time I entered it. I went to Drexel University. We had to do three internship experiences. Okay. Three co-ops, right? Mm-hmm. That first co-op, <laughs> and I was in financial reporting, right? Mm-hmm. So that we were a public company. That means we had to file SEC statements by a certain date, right? So at year end, which goes on right now, you work like a dog. Mm-hmm. You work and you work and you work. You work till four in the morning. 19 years old working till 4 in the morning. What that mean? What that look like? So I better have Jesus. Yeah, you better have me. So thank God that before that experience, me and Jesus, I was baptized and saved at 13. Okay. But at 19, you know, I'm you know, a little wild. You know, not a whole lot wild. But I, I, was, I, was, wild. I, I was wild. I was wild. <laughs> I, was wild. I, I, owe I owe all of that being wild. I owe all of that, right? But listen, so at 19, right, we had, man, we had a little encounter. No, mm-hmm. a major one. Because this is when it was going to get personal. Mm-hmm. So it was personal. I called Graham. I said, why you didn't tell me everything was in the Bible, all my problems? Wow. She said, I didn't. You wasn't listening. Wow. Said, okay. 
So then I knew to take him to, I had to take him to corporate America, all them devils in there. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I had to tell, pray. Tell us, tell us, share with us, friend. Mm. One of the major moments where you actually saw how much you needed God in corporate America when you were faced with one of those um, demonic presences or demonic activities. Mm. There's so many. There's so many. Um, I think the one that may stand out the most um, was my very first career experience. Mm -hmm. Very, very first, right? And it was discrimination. We won't call it what it is, right? But I did have a lot of support. I had a lot of support. I worked for the largest. It was a Fortune 500, and it was the they were number one in insurance, right? And so... Um, I didn't report directly to the person. I reported to the person that reported directly to him. And the person that discriminated was a vice president. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was young. and But I was confident. Mm -hmm. I was reared in confidence. Right. So mm -hmm. I had a lot of confidence. And, um, you know, at 22, you ain't supposed to be confident. Right. You know? And I'm a Gen X. Right, kids? Yeah, Gen X. Right? I'm in Gen X. I'm in Gen X, right? But I was running around like a millennial then by myself, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, by myself. Saying, well, we should have this and we should do that. Wow. And this should be this and it should be that. And they, you know, they you were leader. to hush. You were leader. Yeah, yeah, my leadership couldn't, it wasn't allowed to come out, mm -hmm. you know? And um, so that was, that was um, me putting me in a box. You know, um, just go do that work. Go do them tax returns. Go do that tax provision. Be quiet. Mm -hmm. No, I can't do that. Like we, our our opinion should count. Our collaboration should, you know, mean yeah. something here. Cause we getting up and getting in here at eight thirty every day, just like you. Yeah. Right. Okay. Wow. Right. Right. So that part. Right. So, um, you know, um, I remember, and I had a very close Italian girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Right. I taught her everything that she knew. I really did, right? Me and her went to a conference in Detroit. Mm. And when we got back, and, you know, he had to sign off on our expense report. He had called me in his office to question whatever charges he had a question about. He called her to question her about my charges. Didn't ask her about hers. I said, mm. okay. But there was a lot of other things that he did, too. Wow. But he wanted me to be humble. But I was humble. That's the thing. I was always respectful. I always spoke. I spoke to everybody. Yes. I had nothing but kindness coming from my heart. And they and he really, really, really tried to mistreat me, right? Mm -hmm. So I, you know, said to a cousin that, you know, at the time she was running St. Chris, and I said, should I sue him? And I was like, I don't know nothing about lawsuits, but should I sue? Mm -hmm. And she was like, no. And I was like, why? And she, I was 26 years old. She was like, because it could like pull you from the industry. Wow. It could like blow you from your career. And I was like, okay, that's cool. God will take care of it. She said, God will take care of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what she did. So when I was moving to my next career elevation, getting ready to go to Memphis, Tennessee for a financial development program with international paper, um, he was demoted. Mm -hmm. And the head of the department came to me and he said, me and him were always cool. The one that came to me and he said, we were going through, um, back then, re-engineering. And he said to me, um, Maisha, I said, mm -hmm. He said, um, I know everything that happened to you. Mm -hmm. He said, don't worry about it. It'll be taken care of. Wow. I was like, wow. Fast forward. Now I'm in management consulting. Um, in the 2000 decade, I think I went to management consulting in 2006, went to work for a firm. And of course, what management consulting wants to know is if you've worked in, you know, for Fortune 500s, who do you know there? We can get them as a client. So of course I would always, you know, give whoever I worked for and who to speak to. We got a, that former employer of mine. Mm -hmm. He was still there. He was a huge lawyer there. He was still there. Guess who gave? the biggest recommendation for me to get them as a client, wow. that same person that discriminated. So wow. had wow. I, would mm -hmm. that thing have come fast forward like it did? Wow. You never know. Right. And then he had been through cancer, 
my mother was dying of cancer. Mm -hmm. He had did a lot. My mother lived in London at the time. He had did a lot for the company in the UK. So he knew all about, you know, different treatments and things like that, that he was able to share with me and give me the best advice around if she's dying, Maisha, if it's terminal, do not put on her to have to want to live. Just put on her. Give her the support that she needs because mm -hmm. we'll run around as the um, victim of cancer, because I call it victim, right, mm -hmm. of cancer, you know, trying to live for our families wow. and not mm -hmm. really taking the best care of ourselves in those moments. So you never know. We was buddies at the end. Right. In the beginning when I was young, he ain't like, but that's see, okay. I, what I find, and it's the same thing that happened with Tracy. Mm. What I find is, anytime the enemy wants you to hate someone, yeah. it's because they have something to do with your destiny. Mm. Wow. Mm, that's good. That's really good. That's they have good. something to do with your destiny. That's good. And so, we cannot be for or with the enemy against people. Jesus. Because God has called us to love. Jesus. Right? Yes. As I was, I, was, I was making tea for my son this morning... Who gets on my everlasting? He gets on my yeah. That was gonna bother me. Oh, it gets on my everlasting. So I'm making tea for him this morning, feeling unappreciated. But I'm still gonna make the tea because God just I said, "This how you feel? Is this how you feel, Father? When you do stuff for people who don't appreciate you, who don't acknowledge you, is this how you feel, Father? Because if this is how you feel, I don't like it. Yes. But I'm still gonna do what you say. I'm gonna love anyway." Right? And then what you also allow God to do in that moment is vengeance his mind, say to the Lord. Yes. So we have to show in the natural what God is saying to do in the spiritual. This is what happened. And he says, now, because you stay low, I got you. I protected you because there's something in the future that's going to happen. If you just wait, wait on him. Wait on him. Just wait on him. It's helpful. Wait on him. Just wait on him. So good. We always want to move. And, and it makes us feel good to, you know, they did this. I want to react. No. What up? Because God has a plan. Yeah. And always. we don't know what that plan is. Yeah. But the enemy always, he, first of all, he don't like any unity at all. Mm -mm. He, does, he, like, he doesn't mm -mm. like unity. Mm -mm. He likes chaos. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. anytime there's dislike or anything like that, I always be like, all right, Father, what is... What is the end game in this? Because I see you, Ebony. I see you over here. Yeah. I see you trying to make me hate this person. Oh, God, what is your will for this person? Mm -hmm. Because despite how we treat God, he still loves us. Yes. Despite us. All of us, too. All of us. Yes. His grace is promiscuous. Yes. It really is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. So, therefore, it's like, so thank you for sharing that story because... Yes. Sometimes people are in certain situations at work and they don't know how to apply the word of God to it. Yeah. So this yeah. is what I'm trying to get to with, yeah. with this business masterclass is yeah. not just business. Yeah. Anybody can do business. For sure. But no, everybody's not going to do business with God as the center. Yeah. Yes. Must be. And then actually not just using God for the scriptures that says, I want to, God, you give me the ability to gain wealth. But God, give me the ability to have character. Yeah. Give me the ability, Father, to have the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness. Mm -hmm. Even in the face of discrimination. Mm -hmm. Even in the face of racism. Mm -hmm. Even in the face. And there's that, that is what that environment breeds. It's racism. Yeah. What else could it be? Right. Why don't you like me? Because I'm confident. People don't like confidence either. So, yeah. Because I'm nice. People don't like that either. My pastor and TDJ say nice is sexy. What? Yeah. Well, then I'm sexy in the mud. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Erica, Erica, yeah. let me ask you a question. Sure. So, you asked um, for my should be on here. I did. What was your vision? And what did God show you as to the reason why she should be on the business master class? I felt that Maisha was an excellent contender for this program because she's been on both sides. She's been able to navigate the world of someone else's business. And she had the leap of faith to go into her own. But what truly draws me to her is that she really pours into people who want to execute their vision. She mm. really pours in 
to so many people. And the fact that she would take time to create um, a program, we did networking, we did uh, how to put our vision together, we did finance, we did some taxation. I mean, we really went through so many sectors. And with each sector, she was present. She even brought others into the program. Oh, we had so Not many speakers. guests. We had so many speakers. And you can tell that her heart was so uh, passionate towards us, the students within that class. Mm. And I love the way the guest speakers had such a respect and love for her. That shows the, the character and the reputation that precedes her. And so I just thought she would be such a benefit. So ask her some questions here to, 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 to. Um, I guess my question for you, Maisha, is um, how do you prepare? How do you prepare to put together that program? What's in your What's in your mind? Like, what are all the pieces that you know that you have to touch in order to mm. put together this beautiful package for us to glean from? Well, first I gotta wake up real early in the morning. <laughs> yeah, four four thirty, four four thirty, right? I need to be up and popping. Now, then sometimes God makes it three three thirty. Now that's when I'm tired. <laughs> Four four thirty. I'm ready. Right, that's my power time. Especially when it's here right here, light outside. Yes, my light. Yeah. Yes. So I need that time because that's my time of reading, research, mm. and definitely looking at other models, right? Mm. Yes. That's yes. It. So I look at that's other it. models throughout this region, but also um, you know, all over the country. And I'm gonna tell you, you know, a lot of modeling that I glean off of is in Atlanta. Mm. Reason being because Atlanta has the most, absolutely the most black entrepreneurs in this country, mm -hmm. right? But check that list, right? Look at the list of areas that have the most black entrepreneurs. We know DC is on there. We know we're on there. Yes. You know, Dallas I think might be on there. But you know, look at that list. And that, you know, and I'm I'm pointing that out is because you just don't want to be doing business in the tri-state. Um, you want to be eventually doing business all throughout this country. Right? right? And I'll just let me plug this, right? When I said I grew up in entrepreneurship. My grandmother's brothers, right, owned the largest black beauty supply in Philadelphia. It only succeeded to the second generation. We should still be eating today, mm. you know? Mm. And that's why I'm really focusing on succession planning. Wow. But we're going to get it back. Succession All that family that might be that's on good. here, we're going to get it back, right? But the thing is, is that as a child, there are pictures of me next to the trucks. Two years old, standing in front of the truck. Okay, and then when I used to get out of Catholic school, 59th and Media, and come down the street to where our little warehouse was, I used to stand on the steps and be like, "Yo, I'm the king of the world!" <laughs> like you couldn't tell me I wasn't rich because we had like eight trucks. We owned the whole block at the top with um, garages, and then in that block, it was all but two houses that wasn't ours. Mm. So the brothers owned the beauty supply, and one of the sisters was a hair salon at the other corner. You wow. can't tell me wow. Wow. that we shouldn't still be eating, right, right, right. right? And our products was everything, wow. Chambers Beauty Supply. When I mentioned that to generations above me, they know that. Right. They went to every hair salon in Philly that product was in pretty much, all up and down the East Coast, and then sent the product across the country. Wow. My cousin's grandmother was the office manager. My other cousin's grandfather was the accountant. You see what I'm saying? Wow. Family did that. So entrepreneurship is buried inside of me. I wow. saw it. I grew up in a salon. I used to be in a salon all day, every day. That was my aftercare the salon. Wow. I hear her all the ladies' business and problems. <laughs> <laughs> and sold so the candy. So, candy. <laughs> so what, what I'm also hearing too is in your bloodline is freedom. Mm. It is. And it, but they 
But it, but you know, when they came from Virginia, just go back some generations before they came from Virginia, and we weren't free. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But they were, and then they were able to open up opportunities for all of us. So what they wanted my mother's generation just to do, they felt that that was hard work. So it was. But they just wanted them to get educated. Yes. And pretty much everybody on my mother's generation has an advanced degree. Wow. It, or is educated. You know? So that was the goal of the family versus it being successful. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. So when you when you have this program and mm -hmm. you have your candidates that come into the entrepreneurship um, program, do you find that you have to adjust your program according to the visions? that are there according to the students? A little, a little we do, but um, what we've done, and it, uh, I think we had to do that more in the past because we just had one cohort. Now we have three cohorts. So we have a cohort for those that are new owners just with a vision or maybe just starting out. Cohort two is for those that have an income level of around 75K. And then cohort three will be for those that have an income level around 300K. Mm -hmm. So we're tailoring it to what the needs of those revenue, um, those revenue points are mm -hmm. for those particular business owners. Yeah, that was awesome. So that is what we, and, and that really came out of the feedback that we got from all of the cohorts. Mm -hmm. Feedback that I got from you. Makes feedback sense. that I got from many that were in the classes. We listened. We didn't mm -hmm. just, you know, go and toss that information. You and know, we loved we, it. yeah. We when, loved it. Yeah. yeah. When, yeah. when you guys, if we had you do surveys or if we had you, you know, answer questions and do debriefs and things like that, we mm -hmm. took that stuff to heart. Yeah. And so with the planning of what is to come, that all goes into it. So those that will be now a part going forward, it gets bigger and better. <laughs> it, it was a lovely experience, and I think what was so wonderful, even though you gave us, um, the, the group, you and your group gave us so much business points, mm -hmm. everything was centered in Christ. Yeah. Every, yeah. every single thing. There was always scripture. There was always um, times we had to talk about different scenarios. How would you handle this? How do you bring the word into that? Let me explain how that can be done better. Yeah. So I think that what was so great about the program is that you gave us the fund fundamentals, but you also gave us scenarios of what it looked like yeah. to execute those fundamentals. So yeah. it, was, it was a great experience. Wow. It was really wonderful. Mm -hmm. I, I, I could not imagine moving the t-shirt business further without that program. So. Wow. And well, thank you, Pastor Herndon, for allowing such a thing to take place. Yeah, that was great. For sure. It was great. Awesome, awesome. So, so I'm, we're going to take some time to read some of these comments here mm -hmm. because uh, people have been blowing up the comments. And I got the phone close. I got the phone close. Because <laughs> <laughs> my glasses still won't be able to see all the yeah, over there. Um, so, let's see here. I'm scrolling back because I don't want to miss anything. Um, so, I, you know, I'm going to go all the way back. And the reason I'm going to go all the way back is so you can see mm -hmm. who's on here to support sure. you this morning. Sure. Um, and if I put your name, I apologize, you know. Uh, let's see. So we got who that is? Tara Lynn? Terry Lynn Donnell. Oh, oh that's that's so awesome. Awesome. Terry she Lynn. is the executive director of the Community of Compassion CDC. Yes. Yes. So all of this programming comes under her leadership and she is for it. Yes. <laughs> she is so supportive of entrepreneurs. So supportive. Yes. And she does so much for, you know, the church, the community, and really pushing this along with so many other programs. They So check out the CDC's website. They have health programming, youth programming, all, and it, it is just to grow. It really is. It really is. Amen. Yeah. Tanya Jones. Tanya uh, Jones. Oh, Tanya. Tanya. <laughs> Enjoyable. We are <laughs> Yes. And y'all better get, get that good cafe food tomorrow. Pressed juices, smoothie bowls, smoothies, whatever she cooking up. Last time I had this Chipotle chicken rice bowl. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. <laughs> it was delicious. <laughs> Love <laughs> you, time. Yeah, I know, yeah. that's right. Anita Sims. Oh, that's my cousin. Her dad, her dad was one of them brothers. Okay. That, that her dad, one of them brothers that had that truck out there for Chambers Beauty Supply. She's one of the only ones that still lives 
in our family neighborhood, 56, 58th and Master, Hobart and Master. I know that's right. I know that's right. Ashley Nicole. Ashley Nicole. Let me see. That has to be my Ashley in Delaware. <laughs> 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 sister. And then T. Nicole Chambers. Another winner. Another winner at a Compassion Shark Tank. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Love her. Leslie Allen Toms. Hi, brother. <laughs> he named us Cam. He named us Cam. Um, good morning, Sister Debbie. How are, are you? you? All right. So, we're going to keep uh, Irene. Oh, Irene. Irene. Okay. Delaware. Wilmington in the house. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> uh, let's see. Desiree. Oh, Des. On that core team. On that core team. That's the real estate deep. But anybody need a house, know about grants, this, that, the third, get in touch. With Desiree McDuffie, she Desiree. I, Des, I always say it wrong, but you know, yes, she's <laughs> a Philly real estate diva. She has a show too on Philly Favor, so check her out on Philly Favor. Okay. And she's on the core team of the entrepreneurship class. She gives a wealth of information. Compassion Shark Tank was created by Des. Oh, awesome, awesome. All right, Marvin C. Never. Ah, oh, I love them. Nap That's yes. my deacon brother. Right. And his lovely wife, yes. Lori, Minister Lori Napper. They are also core team yes. for entrepreneur, the entrepreneur wonderful. program. Wonderful. Yep. And they own A and Beyond Services. If you need um, restoration, this, that, and the third, we can write build developments. We can write build developments. Remember, Mark, we won't put the design center on 60th Street. I know that's right. My baby's on here. She said yes from ATL and my baby doesn't yeah. ATL. Um, Amy Hodge. That's the best girlfriend. She the A and C A S. She the A and C A S. She's an accountant. Nina McNeil. Oh, that's the little cousin. I said a little cousin. That's my little cousin. She a part of that Chambers family too. And she has, if you need bookkeeping services, she is the one for your bookkeeping services. She's a quick book, quick book. Pro advisor, mm -hmm. as well as an MBA, and um, she owns a business called Logical Financial Solutions. Let's get her information in the chat. She should yes. Nina, put sure. your info in yes. the chat, please. All right, so, uh, and then Walina Walker, she says, so oh, proud of you. Oh, that's my stepmom. <laughs> <laughs> she says, so proud of you. Good morning, let's pull out. Are you uh, and Andrea Fuller? Andrea Lifford. Oh, okay. That is one of my ladies, one of my first Christian Compassion ladies. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. That has guided me and guided me. Pastor introduced me to her in my very first Bible study and said, y'all two got to know each other. And she's walked with me. Wow. She's walked with I love me. It. I love you. Oh, Theresa Walls. Oh, that's my little cousin Pooh. <laughs> I love you, Pooh Bear, Pittsburgh. Okay, Arme Armina. 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 That's my cousin. That's one of my favorite cousins. She lives in Bowie, Maryland. She's mm -hmm. a business owner as well. She actually has an event coming up in March okay. for women's. Uh, Mina, drop your information in the chat. For Women's History Month, she's doing an event, and she does phenomenal events. She's she's an incredible lady. Awesome. Ebony Porter. I love you, Ev. I love you. She's in Ohio now, and she... um. Ebony used to be at the Church of Christian Compassion. She also is a business owner. And um, I want to say she's at a Chamber of Commerce in Ohio. So if anybody is in Ohio, it would be great for you to get in touch with Ebony. She knows that landscape. She's from out there. Awesome. Rosemary Ruff Weldon. Yes, that is my mother-in-law. Love <laughs> you. Thank you for the support this morning. Awesome. Awesome. I think we got everybody. Darling Wade. Darling, oh, my big sister, my big sister from that first experience. She oh, know where we was. She <laughs> know where we was at that Fortune 500 insurance company in Philadelphia, in Liberty Place when it was brand new. She said, yes, the Greater Akron Chamber. Yes, the Greater Akron Chamber. That's Ebony. Yep. So, Maisha, yes. in closing, what's our time, Yolanda? Oh, we have about five minutes. Oh, all right. Good. 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 So, in closing, Knowing that you have the accounting expertise, yes. What what would be three things you would share with someone who is mm -hmm. building their business? Yeah, three things to really look out for yep. that will help them really be able to manage themselves well financially. Yeah. So, um, of course, like I mentioned earlier, your startup steps are extremely important, right? 
One, to me, one of the two of the key things in startup steps are, um, well, it's actually three. Your entity selection. Everybody yells LLC. But really look to see if you need to be a sole proprietor, mm -hmm. an LLC, a corporation, a S Corp, a limited partnership, all of the different entities. Really speak to somebody on that. Just don't automatically say, ah, I want to be an LLC. Now, there are big benefits around being an LLC. You know, I'm not going to go any further because that right there will be off for three hours. So, we'll stop there. Another thing, startup, is please do not mix your personal with your business. That's the money, right? Don't collude the funds. You need a separate business account, mm -hmm. right? There are tons of banks in the area that's support entrepreneurship, right? Um, tons. All the big banks do, but if you have a better relationship with your credit union, use your credit union. Use whatever the best is for you and who is going to believe in your vision, okay? If you ever have to go to that, and that is for-profit and non-profit, because non-profits have to have banks too. Yes, we have to produce, non-profits have, have to produce financial statements as well. Um, and then make sure that whatever bank it is and how you're banking and you're swiping that card and you're not, you're, you, you wouldn't, like, you won't drive Nina crazy if she's your bookkeeper, right? Because everything's going to the same place and she's linking everything to QuickBooks. And if there is a discrepancy, she's easily able to zero in and say, huh, that charge, is it personal or is it business, right? Because at the end of the day, when you go to do your taxes, if you're aggressive on taking a deduction that really is not and you're audited, you will be challenged. And you have to produce the proper documentation. So I always say keep those two, th two things separate. Then the other thing is really your finances, right? And that is your accounting and your financial statements and everything related to that. Because those are, when you want to go get money, that's something they ask for. When you want to partner with others, that's something people want to see, right? If you want to procure, I'm just going to use this. If you're a construction client and you want to do business with PennDOT, right? PennDOT, nine times out of ten, are going to want to see tight financials, and they're going to want to make sure that you, everything, T-I, dotted, because they're not going to do business with you if you are not tight. You must be tight when you are doing business on a larger scale. And why shouldn't we be able to do business on a larger scale? We definitely should be. It doesn't have to be business with individuals. What about B2B? Business to business, large government contracts, whatever that's out there. Because it's ours. God says so. And y'all know his bank account is big. And all of his connections and relationships are huge. So, yes. Those would be some of the main things that I would, you know, want to. And then at the end of the day, what I specialize in taxation it helps with all of that because when you come to get your taxes done, you can't hand me a box of receipts because if you do, I'm going to charge you a lot of money to tally them up. Mm, that's good. That's good. Um, so in other words... So, so holler at Nina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she put it in here. She said so, uh, we need, we, you need an accountant, a bookkeeper. Yeah. <laughs> so what if you are someone who is just, it's just you? You don't have a bookkeeper. You don't have any other connections just yet. What would you say to them on how to organize themselves financially? Mm -hmm. they, you have to go get one. Because okay. unless you're an accountant, why would you want to operate in that space? T.D. Jakes says it well. He says it well. You cannot be the face of the business, be doing business development, this, that, and the third, and worried about doing the marketing, and that ain't your expertise. Mm -hmm. Worried about doing the accounting, that ain't That's your good. expertise, That's right? Run good. around doing what your expertise is and hire your dream team to do to others. Well, I don't got no money. Make the money happen. Make it happen. See who will barter services with you. Mm -hmm. See who will give you a discount and you pay them back later. Get on a payment plan. Do whatever you have to do for that dream team. That dream team is what makes that business grow. Because yeah. we want to grow, we want to impact, and we want to scale. 
Mm. And we want to leave it to the next generation and do our succession planning. Because Reggie and Reagan need to be taking things over. I ain't doing this for my home. <laughs> <laughs> and neither one of them want to deal with no accounting firm, but they better get somebody to work it. And lastly, give the definition of a succession plan. A definition. Mm -hmm. So a definition of a succession plan is a business plan, right, or a strategic plan that's going to lay out the business going to the next generation. Mm -hmm. Or if you're incapacitated, say, God forbid, you have an ailment today or tomorrow and you cannot operate that business. Who won't operate it? We just going to leave it dormant? We going to leave it to go to the ground? Wow. Or do we have a plan in place mm -hmm. for somebody to be able to step in, fill in, and keep it going? Wow. Because life is life in every day and it's happening. It is. It's yes, happening. It is. Yes, right? it is. That's so good. you need That's somebody good. to be able to, and you need to have somebody that you can trust that you can share that succession planning with. Because it don't wow. need to die. Our beauty supply company didn't need to die. Right. Didn't need to die. Right. But, you know, they didn't know succession planning like that wow. in the 70s and 80s. Wow. The founder died in 1979. Do you think he was thinking about succession planning? No. Yeah. He wasn't. That's really My good. brothers will keep it. Somebody will do it. Some nephew or this will do it, right? Mm -hmm. They'll just do it. But no, that needs to be documented and notarized. So that's something to really have in the forefront of your mind as yes, you're building. For sure. Wow. wow. That's sure. excellent. That's yeah. really good. Unless you want it to end, right? But it may not be that it goes to the next generation. It may be that it goes to sale, right? Mm -hmm. And But that needs to be documented. Wow. That's excellent. Awesome. It's the, it's the planning ahead. It's you the know, planning ahead. It's the planning ahead. And, and seeing it's strategic. The end, seeing the end, you know, mm -hmm. in the beginning. Yeah. And that's why that business plan, you just don't write that to get money. You just don't write that to get through what you need to get through. That is your living document that goes with you. You keep that electronic binder up close and personal, you know, and your strategic plan and your succession plan. And succession planning is within your original business plan because it asks if an owner dies or if an owner is incapacitated, what do I do? So basically, it's what the word of God says. Write the vision and make it real Make it real plain. Yes. So that when men receive it, they may learn. Yes. Right. yes. Yes. So so I don't know about you, but I have been blessed this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I I don't I don't see that far. I, I don't see the end and the beginning. All I see is the day by day and the obedience. So I thank you for seeing this because I didn't. Thank you. Um, thank you for your vision. Thank, thank you for God. your vision and seeing what you saw in her. Um, thank you all for your being on here this morning um, and being with us to get this business masterclass. And it was truly a business masterclass. And so I'm so grateful. Um, we're about to get up out of here. It's now 9.03. Right. Um, but before we do, because as we do here um, every Saturday, are there any praise reports or prayer requests? Um, and then if there are, we will pray for you. Um, when I say we, I mean Maisha. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and then we will pray. And then we'll pray out. And so if you do have any praise reports or prayer requests, you can put them in the chat right here. And then we will pray for them. Um, any last thoughts before we get up out of here? Um, I'm just thankful for everybody that jumped on this morning, taking time on your Saturday morning to do this. Um, I just want to say I encourage you. It is a leap year, you know? Um, and if this is your, I just feel like in the winter time, I felt that it was like in a deep winter of January, I felt that it, I felt like spring. Really don't know why, you know? So maybe others are feeling like that. So I just say be encouraged. Um, follow your vision. You know, if you never try, if you never try it, how do you know that it's going to work? Reach out to me, you know, come up to me. If we're in the same, you know, in the same circles, in the same place, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you or give you what I know. I share information. So um, just, just know that, and too, that I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. And I really want the black community to use this to get that economic thing that we must get right. Dr. King, you know, had pillars 
that we've achieved. We've achieved housing, we've achieved education, we've achieved spirituality, but we've not achieved economics. We've not. And I want us to achieve economics. And we can. That's the thing. We don't have to live in a property mindset. We don't have to at all be poor. We don't. Mm. We don't. We don't. Because there's so much out there. And if we find ourselves in a situation as such, be sure to stay humble because help is there for you. I'm there for you. I, you know, if I find myself in that situation, I'm keeping low because I know that there are people that are called to help me if I'm in that situation. But if you find yourself abound, always be sure to look down and help. Always be sure to look down and help. Why? Because you never know if you're a base or you're a bound. You never know. Yeah. So we have two prayer requests. Yes. Um, one it says, I need prayer for financial stability and wisdom. That's my baby. Mm -hmm. um, and then a clean, uh, Aquila said, praying for um, cleaning business, hiring, and the proper um, paperwork. Got it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, we got more? Uh, nope, that was it for right now. Okay. So Alrighty. you can pray for them, yes. and then also you can pray yourself. Yeah. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we lift up the young lady that is asking for financial stability and wisdom, God, in yes. the name of Jesus. Yes. We know, Lord, that you call us to be good stewards, God. It is in your word how we should handle our finances, Lord. So, Lord, please just give her the grace and the mercy to work through any and everything she has to regarding her finances, God. However, this year may have come in, let it not go out that way. I'm believing you. I'm believing you for the turnaround. I see it. I know it. And dear, all you have to do is just trust in him, lean on him because he is the only one that can and will turn it around. God, we thank you in advance for doing it. And I lift up my sister with her cleaning business and all of her proper paperwork. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Fly the doors open for her, God. Yes. Commercial contracts we claim it right now. Residential contracts we claim it right now. Yes. All the developments in the world let like all the streets of the development be like, yes, I'm going to, you know, her for my cleaning. Let let her have the proper staff that she needs. Let her get all the paperwork in order, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for doing it in advance. We thank you for this class. I thank you for Yolanda and Erica coming together with us on this morning. Again, I shout out my son, and I thank you for, you know, for him just opening his doors to us, God. Thank you for what you've done in my children and my family's lives. Thank you for everyone that is on this live. I ask that you cover every single household as they go to and fro on today, God. Traveling mercies for those that need to go out. Bless, God. Bless only the way that you know how. I ask all of these petitions be accepted by you. You are unmatched. Yes, you are unmatched. Yes, yes. In Jesus' name. This has been amazing. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we out. <laughs>